Brüder und Schwestern von Armen tun nicht. Alle von seinen zu seid und zu spreit. Zusammen, zusammen, wie von sie es gerät. Sie flattert von Zahren, von Blut ist sie reut. A schwue, a schwue, auf Leben und Tod. Brüder und Schwestern, von Arbeit du neut, alle wo seinen zu seid und zu spreit, zusammen, zusammen, die von sie's gerät, sie flattert von Zahren, vom Blut ist sie reut, a schwue, a schwue, bei Fleben und Teut. Und daim, the non-Jewish Jews. In a few clandestine meetings in Jaffa in 1919, few Jewish activists in the far left of the Jewish workers' movement in Palestine founded the Socialist Workers' Party, known in its Hebrew name, MAPS. The party that will exist until 1921, when it disintegrated under British imperialist oppression, was the nuclei of communism in Palestine, Israel. It also was the beginning of a more than a 100 years history of left-wing anti-Zionism. The history of this left is the subject of the following few talks. We decided to construct the first talks around three films by the documentary filmmaker, Ran Turbiner. I will say something about the film we are about to see shortly. But before doing that, I want to lay out a few themes that I hope will guide us as we collectively explore this history. Anti-Zionism is part of the history of Zionism since its earliest beginnings. At first, religious Jews of different stripes objected to Zionism. Reform Jews opposed Zionism because it ran contrary to the mission of Jews to disperse among the peoples and bring their message to the world. The strongest objection came from ultra-Orthodox Jews who have seen Zionism as a rebellion against the will of the Lord to place his people in exile and not to build a political entity in the Holy Land and upset the non-Jews. However, the brand of anti-Zionism we are talking about now is different. In contrast to ultra-Orthodox Jews who resisted Zionism in the name of the past, the socialist anti-Zionists resisted Zionism in the name of the future. For Jewish socialists, Jewish nationalism was a problem. Jews, they said, are not a nation. They have no common language, culture, economy, and territory. More so, socialists looked at the vision of Zionism as too narrow. For them, the way to solve the Jewish problem was by struggling shoulder to shoulder with the non-Jewish working class. Jewish workers will build a post-capitalist world where not just the exploitation of men will vanish from the face of the earth, of the earth, but also anti-Semitism. The Zionist idea of ingathering the exile, meaning con uh, concentrating all the Jews in Eretz Israel, seems as an illusion that diverts the Jewish working class from its primary task to participate in the proletarian revolution that will, that, uh, that will bring about the classless communist society. Here is another difference between Zionists and anti-Zionists. For Zionists, anti-Semitism is an unmovable fact of social life. Non-Jews will always hate Jews, and there is no way to eradicate it. So paradoxically, the Zionist agrees with the anti-Semite, consenting to remove himself from his presence in his own to his own country. Socialist anti-Zionists see things in the opposite way. For them, anti-Semitism is a curable disease that society's social transformation can and should bring to an end. As such, Jews should not leave the places they reside for Jewish homeland where they are supposed to be safe. The fact is that it is more dangerous to be a Jew in the Jewish state than in the Jewish diaspora but stay where they are and fight for the liberation of society as a whole. Where non-Jews uh, be liberated, goes the argument, 
so do Jews be free. The understanding that the fate of, of Jews is interconnected to that of non-Jews is the source of the internationalism of socialist anti-Zionists. In the films we are, about to, we are about to see, we have three historical episodes of Jewish socialist anti-Zionist internationalist struggles. The first film gives a moving portrayal of the history of the branch of the Bund movement in Israel. The general Jewish labor Bund in Lithuania, Poland, and Russia was founded in 1897 in a small attic in Vilna out of a study group of other study circles of Jewish workers who gathered together to learn the writings of Marx. The activists of the Bund insisted that the best way to conduct political activity among the mass of Jewish workers is to talk to these workers in their own language, Yiddish. In its first incarnation, the Bund was active in the Western parts of the Russian Empire. The rise of the Bund came on as the Russian Empire was going through a rapid process of industrialization. Jews who were principally engaged as small artisans and traders and became workers in Jewish-owned industries, mainly in the needle industry. To this newly created proletarian, the, act the activists of the Bund turned to, and they achieved a mass following. Beyond their activity among Jewish workers, the Bund also took part in the founding of, Ru of Russian socialism. Representatives of the Bund took part in establishing the, the Russian Social Democratic Party alongside Lenin, Trotsky, and Kahanov. However, their demand that the party have a special section for Jews was rejected by the other Russian socialists as a nationalist reaction. Georgi Plekhanov, the father of Russian Marxism, famously said that the Bundists are nothing more than Zionists suffering from seasickness. Lenin and other Bolsheviks have turned their negation of Jewish nationalism first to the Bund. This history of ideological rival and the fact that the Bund was a political rival of the Bolsheviks for the loyalty of the Jewish workers will have deadly consequences in the later history of the Bund. Far from the dismissive critique of other socialists, the Bund developed a unique ideological mixture that interwoven together Jewish diaspora nationalism and Marxism. It argued for a separate Jewish national identity based on, on the Yiddish, on Yiddish culture. Politically, the Bund developed a demand for cultural autonomy in the framework of democratized and socialist Russia. Like all revolutionary organization in Russia, the Bund took an active part in the struggle against the oppressive and manifestly anti-Semitic Tsarist regime. Participating in the 1905 revolution and the February 1917 revolution. However, when the, Bolshevik took, the Bolsheviks took power in October 1917, the first stage of the history of the Bund came to a close. As the Bolsheviks established themselves in power after the Russian Civil War, they outlawed the Bund in the Soviet Union. The activists of the Bund, like many other socialist parties active in Russia, before 1917, were absorbed into the Soviet Communist Party. In the 1920s, many former Bundists were active in the Jewish section of the Soviet Communist Party, the Yvsektia, developing a proletarian Yiddish culture. The next stage of the history of the Bund is placed in interwar Poland. In the wake of World War I, Poland, carved by the powers around it in the 18th century, was revived. The new Polish state, emerging from the collapse of the Russian and German empires, was politically unstable. The Polish experiment in democracy ended with the authoritarian regime of military men and the landed and industrial elites. One of the problems that Bitwerd re reconstituted Poland was that there were many non-Polish minorities within its borders. Those included Ukrainians, Germans, white Russians, and three million Jews, the largest Jewish community in the world at the time. The Polish state, with its resurgent nationalism, pursued an aggressive policy of Polonization. 
these policies gave rise to variant, to variant anti-Semitism. Jewish economic activity was limited and they were dis and discriminated against in all walks of life with violent outbursts. On that, on that background, the Polish Bund rose to prominence among the Jewish working masses in Poland. And the party created its networks of trade unions, schools where students were educated in Yiddish, youth movements, sanatorium, and self-defense groups. Ideologically, the Polish Bund developed an ideology that mixed Jewish Yiddishist national identity and Marxist and democratic values that emphasized the participation of the Bundist in the fight for a socialist Poland alongside Polish workers. The Bund argued for cultural and political autonomy for Polish Jews. In that, the party promoted the idea that Jews will take part in the lives of the nations that within them they lived, while at the same time affording them a separate space where they can develop a national cultural identity. This cultural nationalism placed the Polish Bund in radical opposition to Zionism that emphasized not just the national cultural identity of the Jews, but also their territorial separateness from where they live. Another aspect that separated the two movements was their understanding of what constituted the Jewish nation. For Zionism, Jews the world over were one nation. The Bund referred mainly to the Yiddish speaking Jews of Poland in the interwar years and did not constitute the Jewish people as a global nation. In this sense, the localized Jewish nationalism of the Bund is echoing the ideas of local national identity detached from world Jewry that was elaborated by the Israeli far left in the Communist Party and Matspan in later years. The later history of the Bund during World War II took on a tragic turn. With the Nazi invasion of Poland in September 1939, many of the Bundes leadership took refuge in the Soviet-held eastern part of Poland. Most notably, the two most prominent party leaders, Viktor Alter and Heinrich Ehrlich. Here, the old rivalry between the Bund and the Bolsheviks turned into a blood revenge as Stalin ordered the murder of the two leaders in 1941 for being German spies. In the killing fields of Poland, where the Nazis executed their final solution, the Bundists shared the fate of their people. The Bund activists left in Poland participated in the armed resistance to the Nazi occupier. Most notable among them was the late Mark Edelman, one of the heads of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, and later a dissident and activist in solidarity, ending as a member of the Polish CM, an anti zionist to his last days. In the post-war war, war, war World II era, some group of Bondists remained in Western Europe, the US, Canada, and Israel. However, as the thriving uh, world of Polish Jewry was lost in the ovens of Auschwitz, so did the Bund vanish from the political landscape of the Jewish people. The end of the Bund came about as the two of the most brutal regimes of the 20th century converged to bring its demise both politically and in the most direct fashion, physically. However, what about the ideals of the Bund? Have they been proven to be utterly wrong as Nazi annihilation and Stalinist brutality conspired to show that Jewish life in Europe is impossible? proving the Zionist predictions? On the face of it, the answer in a world after the Holocaust would be yes. However, I think the answer is more complicated. In the interconnected world that we are living in, mainly in the West, a world where we just started to move away from the neoliberal nightmare that destroyed the working classes of many countries. After the recent experiences of populist hate-based politics, that, that poses the most serious challenge to democracy since World War II, reawaking antisemitism that lay dormant in most Western societies beneath the neoliberal rhetoric of multiculturalism. The Bund's experience points the way to the grassroots politics of ethnic minorities, one that does not erase 
the unique cultural identity of the group, but also celebrates it while keeping solidarity with the struggle against the oppression of other groups. So in practical terms, we can, as Jews, participate in the present day struggles of BLM, LGBTQ, Free Palestine movements, and, so, and, and do so as Jews and as internationals, as did our political and ideological ancestors in the Bund. More precisely, as members of IJV, the Bund provide an essential lesson that says that we are not, uh, we are not, uh, that we are part of a distinctly Jewish, uh, Jewish history of struggle. We are not alone in history, that there were others, Jews like us, who stood where we stand today, as Jews, as socialists, and as internationalists. Thank you very much. In all the Kraken Women Gate, Hertman Sabastov guest, Jinglach, Meidach, Kind und Kate, Schmusen, Pumpe, Bob guest, Jinglach, Meidach, Kind und Kate, Schmusen, Pumpe, Bob guest, Genug schon wieder Horror, wenn genug schon Borgen leihen, Macht das Sabastov guest, Lohr mit Brieder sich verdreien, Macht das Sabastov guest, Lohr mit Brieder sich verdreien, Brieder und Schwester, Lohr mit der Kirche in die Hände, Lohr in die Kulei, Kalin verbrechen die Hände. Wir gehen zusammen, lo mir Nikolai kennen, bei Grob mit der Mannen. Hey, 